Okay, so today I was looking at some hands that Leonardo da Vinci has drawn. I've already drawn one of the hands that he has drawn, and I decided I would draw this one where you have two hands clasping each other. I mostly drew it because I said that just looks impossible. And it looks hard to draw. So I decided I would draw it today. And right now you see I'm just blocking it out. Now I've cut a lot of this video so you don't have to suffer through watching me struggle and drawing it as much. But I change it quite a bit as I go along. So it's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Uh, it just takes time. And I have tried and tried with some of my students to get them to spend more time on their work. And some do. And there's, a, there's quite a few that don't. But if you want to get better at drawing, you just have to sit down and struggle through it. And that's how you'll do it. Really pay attention to the different shapes in something. And as I was drawing this one, I was like, this looks terrible. I need to quit. I just need to stop. But you don't. You just keep going and drawing on it. Now, they'll get to a point where you're done. I mean, you can still work on it some more, but... For the most part, you're done. So all I'm doing not right now is I'm just trying to get these shapes where they should go. I'm not sure I've got them just right. I don't think this uh, one is is perfect in any way, shape, or form. It's pretty clunky. But each one I do, I think I'm getting a little better. I try to draw at least one a day. And that's not asking a lot out of yourself to just try to draw like one of these a day. There's a lot of days in the year. Now, I don't do any of these on the weekend, so I'm just drawing these during the day. That's my goal now is just try to draw, if I can, one of them a day during the week. So I'd be five, five a week. And that ought to make me a better artist I'm not even trying to shade I really want to shade I want to smudge this and just shade I think at one point I just stopped the drawing and start smudging around but I'm not really ready for that yet I have to hold back and where you see me putting in some of the fingers I'm going to change that right now I am still drawing it if you want to you can fast forward through the video but I wanted to make this so my students can see that yeah I, I just keep working on a drawing and struggling with it until I get it done so I didn't want to cut this video too much because it would look like I didn't put any effort in it I think you can see I I'm putting a lot of effort into it so I want you to do the same thing uh, work on it and really put the effort into it to try to make it better now when I when I'm drawing something like this usually usually I uh, I have to look at it later to be able to tell where I messed up at but it's something that I need to be able to do Now here's some things about Leonardo da Vinci though. And my hand that I did yesterday. The hand I did, the last one I did, it was the fingers were kind of elongated, the thumb. And it looked more like an El Greco. El Greco was a Spanish painter who came around, who came along much later on than Leonardo da Vinci. And he was a mannerist and he elongated the limbs of his figures and the arms and fingers. and I don't know why I did that, but it's more like an El Greco. At one time, he was a commission to touch up the painting of the Sistine Chapel ceiling that Michelangelo had done. Of course, Michelangelo, like Raphael, had both copied the way Leonardo da Vinci's style worked. And you can clearly see it in their artwork. I mean, because it's directly like his. The only thing is, uh, Michelangelo, he, he painted in a traditional manner with temper paint. 
on wet plaster. So he had to work really fast. Leonardo was playing around with uh, oil paint. Based, no, I don't think I don't think playing around is a good word. How about experimenting with it on uh, different types of surfaces? And sometimes it worked better than others. Oil paint's advantage is you can go back in and work on it over and over and over again, making really complex, lifelike paintings. Or you paint like uh, Michelangelo in the wet plaster with temper paint. You just have to really work really fast to get that to work out because that paint is drying while you're painting into it. But once you paint into it, it's there for a long, long time because you've, you're you not just painting on the surface, you're painting into the surface. And that's what fresco painting is. But, you know... Pretty much all of these Renaissance artists copied Leonardo da Vinci's style. I'll probably draw some like Raphael and Michelangelo, but I, or Michelangelo, however some people pronounce it. But I just haven't got around to that yet. Uh, but I will, eventually. That thumb, it's giving me pains. But see, it's going to make me a better artist once I can get get it to where it looks right yesterday's well the other day when I was drawing the hand on itself there were fingers that were floating above the skin that I and they you could see light coming through them I did not get that I missed out on that so I'll probably draw that hand again it, it eluded me and this one right here still looks like a mess. I mean, because there's parts. Uh, it's a very complex drawing because the some fingers are going one way. Well, of course, it's a clasping hand. And so the other fingers are going the other way. So as you're drawing it, you're, you can lose track of where you're at. But I think it's a great, great assignment to practice drawing something like this because it'll make you better. It's hard to draw this hand and get it to look remotely right but I'm pretty happy with the one I drew today I mean there's still some clunky parts of it on this particular Leonardo da Vinci sketch he didn't include some details I mean I think it, the sketch is perfect but I had to guess in some places and that's okay I couldn't quite get get it right where things were at. But still, yet it's so complex. Very, very complex. I think I finally eventually did get that thumb to look like it was floating up. Like in his drawing. And I was pretty happy about that. I'm good for about maybe one Leonardo da Vinci drawing per day if I can get it to look right. Sometimes I'll draw them during the day and they don't look right at all. So I just have to say, okay, well, the next day I can't do that. But to attempt it is what I'm talking about. And I'll probably draw some other famous artists of that time period and work my way up with other artists of different time periods as, as, as I go along. I think this could easily be turned into a painting or a detail for a painting and that's why I believe it's so important for young artists to learn to draw really well because once you can draw really well then painting shouldn't be as as rough as because first off you have to lay down a drawing usually and then after that you can put in the color so it's a good and the color is a whole other thing especially flesh tones understanding where to put the flesh tones in there. that's on top of being able to draw so you have this really uh, technical skill of learning how to draw realistically and then you add on top of that the skill of knowing how to put in the flesh tones where they go so you'll see me stop every now and then like I did just then and I just cut a big chunk of the video out because I didn't want it to run forever. This one runs for about 16 minutes. I mean, it's still yet fairly long. But it's not as long as some of them I've made. 
I still believe if a student is watching this, they can get a pretty good idea of how to do this by watching me do this. But still yet, they're going to have to just do it and pay close attention to how the fingers uh, are running in different angles and then really put in lots of effort. And I can tell effort. I can tell effort when I can see how many lines uh, they put in the drawing. Does it look like they've shaded it correctly? You know, or at least made an effort to shade it and put in lines where they should go. Have they really observed it? Some of the work I see students do, it's just, they've just rushed right through it. There's not much I can do. But they're not getting as much out of it as if, if they were to like take their time and really put in effort. So if you're wanting to draw this, you can't. All you need is, and look, look at what I'm using. I'm using a number two pencil. A number two pencil with a number two pencil eraser. And my paper I'm drawing on is just copy paper. It's not good paper. But yet this is what many of my students have. They have this same kind of paper. So if I were using really fancy paper and, and really good, I'm going to call it good paper with tooth to it and good pencils of different uh, qualities, darknesses, uh, value. Because like an ebony pencil is way darker than a, a number two pencil. It's a softer pencil. Uh, it doesn't even have an eraser on it. But it's a really good pencil. But a lot of my students don't have ebony pencils. And a lot of them don't have those little stumps that you can um, use to shade with. So what I use is just my finger. And, and the eraser is the one on the pencil. Because, you know, you, they might not have access to go down there and get, but they don't need to. Because everything they need is just regularly kind of, regular kind of stuff so they don't have. Copy paper. A number two pencil. That's it. If you want to color it, that's fine. First you need to draw it, though. Then you can color it. It's important. Some people think the whole thing with a drawing is uh, that it's not as important as some other parts. But painting, painting, I think for me, you need a good drawing to go under it. So work on a good painting could basically improved be improved by you having a good drawing to go under it now it's large it's looking better i mean i've really worked on it and trying to get those shapes just right kind of rambled on about painting there for a bit but uh, i really do think uh, being able to to draw well will lead to you being able to paint better So here we are working on the hand and I'm getting close to being done with this one. There's still some problems with it and now I'm going to try something different just to give me a different viewpoint. So I've turned off the light and I'm going to compare it to the original. Now I kind of went overboard I can tell right now with the fingernails. I put too much in on the fingernails. but. Uh, it doesn't bother me. I probably should get rid of the fingernails, some of the detail around them, and thin down the line. That's probably something I need to do. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, well, I need to thin down those fingernails. And it would be a better drawing. And right there, right there, there's a problem. Need to work on that. I, I fixed the thumb so it looks better. 